Hi guys, welcome back to today's video. We're gonna see how many books I can actually finish in a 24 hour time span. The only books I'm allowing myself to read in this 24 hour time span are fantasy books because I have been in my fantasy era. Here are the books I have on deck. The first one I'm practically almost done with. It is A Fate Inked in Blood and I'm halfway through the book. So I'm definitely gonna finish this. And then Crimson Moth, look at this cover right now. It is absolutely stunning. Lastly, we have The Shepherds Do It. For the purpose of accuracy and for my sanity, I'm gonna do the timer method where I stop the clock every time I stop reading. If you're new here, welcome. But I also do count audio books I'm doing something and I'm listening to an audiobook that still counts the clock down it's currently 1 p.m. and I'm gonna read until hopefully 1 a.m. I've got the timer here let's get started I got a new book This is another fantasy book. I got Fear the Flames by Olivia Rose Darling. I got this because the cover is going out of print and I wanted the OG cover. It looks like it's about enemies to lovers and they have to work together to pull off the greatest heist their world has ever known. Five people all united through revenge will have to transcend the odds stacked against them to infiltrate the impenetrable castle. There's a dragon on the cover so I hope there's dragons in this book as well. Maybe we'll pick this up in this vlog but I'm not sure. I also had to pick up my friend from the train station so I didn't get a lot of reading done but we're gonna go play tennis now and then hopefully I can get back and fit some more reading time in because later tonight I have to drive all the way to New York because I'm picking my brother up from the airport but I have my friend over so I kind of don't want to read while my friend's here it just doesn't feel right but they are also reading A Fate Inked in Blood so we might read it together and then I don't know my goal is just to finish that book today so we'll see where this goes Tennis. I did not say I was good at it. It was at this moment that she knew she fucked up. I low-key batted the ball outside of the fence like it was a baseball. But I really want to go on a walk because I want to show my friend this gorgeous, gorgeous view on this boardwalk. finished A Fate Inked in Blood. It's been around four hours and I had around 300 pages of the story left. So at this rate, I'm reading at a little bit over a page a minute. If I'm finishing a book every four hours, then I have the potential of reading five more books in the next 20 hours. Yeah, I don't, that's insane. I don't think I'll be able to do it, but I guess we'll see. I gave A Fate Inked in Blood four stars. This is a spicy Viking romanticy and it's forbidden romance between Feyre and Bjorn. It's princess bodyguard Bjorn's her bodyguard and she's basically a shield maiden. There's Norse 
Norse mythology where a lot of the main characters are blessed with a drop of blood from a god. There was like one scene in this book where they revealed the logistics of how that works and it was a little bit off-putting but <laughs> other than that if you can overlook that and the romantic situation between like Feyre and whoever she's married to at the moment it's weird but it's only a name. The story is definitely worth it because Danielle L. Jensen's writing is so incredibly immersive, so vivid. I feel like I was transported into the scene not just the fact that it was like painting a picture or I was feel like I was watching a movie as I was reading it felt like I was there as an observer that I was present in like the battles and I felt the high tension the high stakes with everything that was happening the only reason why this book did not get five stars was because the book started out with such a banger where Pharaoh never took shit from nobody and she and Bjorn's banter was just explosive but as the story progressed both Pharaoh's backbone and her banter with Bjorn it just started to dissipate and Pharaoh just let herself be used by absolutely everybody who did not deserve it in the slightest even though I say that it was nice that Bjorn would always stand up for her he was so so protective over her and that was super sweet the plot twist at the end of the story just had my jaw on the floor I think if you read more fantasy books I hear that this is not the most original of plot twists but I think Danielle does a really amazing job of setting up Feyre to be this OP character as the story progresses and just all the potential that she has I can't wait to see what unfolds in the second book that being said the second book I'm picking up in this video is gonna be the crimson moth I think this is fairy loot's February YA book the edges are this beautiful red moth the inside and papers is also gorgeous as well as much as I'm obsessed with how gorgeous the special edition is I feel like the premise of the book is even better because of how intriguing it is it's about a romance between a witch and a witch hunter it's very Salem witch trials and very very gothic but my favorite part of all is the fact that she's a rich fashionista socialite during the day and she's a vigilante at night cat and mouse between them and the tension between them and just how they outwit each other as they're trying to escape each other's grasp is so good so good and Kristen's writing is also as immersive as Danielle L. Jensen's writing. Maybe I'm just becoming a fantasy girly and everything is as immersive. I'm around 50 pages into the book already. There's like 350 pages left but the font is really big so I think I'll actually fly through this quicker or maybe at the same rate as A Fate in Blood. They're definitely enemies in the beginning but right now they're kind of just befriending each other for information and intel and I'm absolutely eating it up so I can't wait to continue. I'll keep you guys updated. morning it is the next day now and I just put on this eye patch from Goodall and it's my favorite thing to do if I have nothing to do for the day and I'm just here to relax and read a good book finish multiple books hopefully I intend to read of 10 maybe 20 hours straight today and it's absolutely pouring outside so it's perfect cozy reading vibes at the moment I might be around 250 pages into the Crimson Moth I am absolutely flying through this book I think it's because it's YA the text is a little bit bigger but it's going by so quickly I think she sets it up really well in the beginning for the reader to understand like how high the stakes are for them to want to be with each other and also the fact that their animosity goes further than them just being a witch and a witch hunter I'm really excited for their romance to start blossoming I finally read the back of this card I never really thought there was like some important information on here it says that this is the first book in an enemies to lovers fantasy duology and I know for all the girlies out there who want a short sweet fantasy series this is gonna be the perfect one I can't wait to see where she ends this off because there's so much she can do with the world but the fact that it's a duology I'm here for it but in the meantime I'm gonna finish Crimson Moth or Heartless Hunter is the US name for it and I'm gonna pick up one dark window afterwards. I'm so excited for that. I'll keep you guys updated when I finish. seven hours and 22 minutes in I just got ready a little bit but I'm absolutely flying through this book I've switched to my Kindle too so I feel like that also adds to it because whenever I read on my Kindle I'm always trying to beat the clock at the bottom for example if it's telling me I have five hours left in the book then I'll always try to read faster plus the writing in this book makes it so easy to fly through ever since like the 70% mark the book has not let down I'm at the end of it and I can't 
I have to film my reaction for the next part because I just know things are going down. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be okay, but I'm loving everything so far and I already feel like this is gonna be a five stars. It's giving me all the feelings. It's literally so good. I feel like it looks like I'm laughing that something fun is happening, but it is the exact opposite I'm like trying not to cry right now. I can't believe what just happened. I'm not okay. That was insane It's only been 11 minutes. I need like a moment to compose myself because what the frick just happened I don't even know how to put this into words because I'm actually utterly speechless for one I'm absolutely gutted blindsided speechless did not see that coming Although I should have because there was so much foreshadowing that I should have seen at least part of the plot twist coming But the second part I was all dandy and then stabbed in the back I will definitely say that Kristen does an amazing job of getting us invested and attached to all of her characters Because a lot of the times in other books where they also do this sort of plot twist I don't feel it as strongly. I was absolutely like sucker punched in this ending because I was so attached to the characters. I'm really excited for the next book. There's so much potential for the world that I just don't know how she's gonna fit that all into a second book. The only thing I have to add is obviously I'm giving this book five stars. Five out of five stars. It is absolutely incredible. I don't think I'm gonna be forgetting this anytime soon. It really feels like the romanticity of the year so far for me. This book honestly has all of the elements. So if you guys are in the mood for any sort of romanticity, Salem Witch Trials, Gothic, Cat and Mouse Duet, intelligent FMC this is it and also none of the characters were dumb for the sake of the plot like they were genuinely both like smart they were just getting outsmarted that's what I appreciate a lot too it was just incredible highly highly recommend I feel like since I just finished two really amazing fantasy books that my expectations going into one dark window now are so incredibly high especially with how well loved this book is that I'm nervous I'm nervous that it's not gonna live up to the hype I'm really in that gothic vibe mood now so there's like literally no better time than now for me to pick this book up and if the cover is any indication this is like the gothic vibe book also like all the chapters kind of seem to have this really cool tarot detail I know the book deals with card magic and it's a very unique magic system there's been a plague that's going around and if you're infected you either die or you awaken with like magical abilities or something let's just see what we're in for at 14 pages into one dark window and it is now 8 41 every fantasy book i've read so far has had some sort of hunting element in a fate inked in blood the fmc was being hunted for her powers in a crimson moth it was witch hunting and in one dark window it kind of reminds me of the darkest minds where there was like an infection and people who survived the infection manifested magical powers those who are infected or have magical abilities are being hunted because it's sort of illegal to use it and the only legal form of magic in here is through providence cards it's writing is almost rhythmic, almost like every sentence rhymes. There's a lot of information in the beginning to set up the world, what the cards mean, the history behind the cards. But I feel like we're getting a lot of almost nothing. Like it's a lot of clues and hints that something's gonna happen, that something is lingering in the dark. With that being said, I went in thinking Nightmare would be sassy and like kind of like Tarn. Yes, he's very powerful and very protective, but he is not sassy in the way that Tarn from Fourth Wing was. And I feel like that is a slight disappointment.
My camera is about to die, but we are 10 hours and 3 minutes into the challenge. I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of an update because I'm on page 207. I know before I said the first 100 pages, there's really no concrete direction of where it's going. Around the 150 page mark to like the 200 page mark where I'm at right now, stuff is going down. They definitely have some sort of mission, have a goal. It's definitely way more intriguing because not everyone is who they claim to be and not everyone is what they seem. There's been so many plot twists so far where I'm gasping and I just like don't don't expect it. We're not even at the end of the book and there's already so many things that are being revealed that make the story so much more intriguing. A little update on the nightmare. I feel like sassy isn't the right word to describe him. He's not really sassy. He's more like snarky in his remarks and he also likes to play tricks. Like he likes to stir the pot. He likes drama but he's also protective. And there's this one scene for example where they're about to travel a distance and they have to be like discreet so they're riding horses. When our FMC is like told to get on a horse she's like nope because animals are aware of like the second beast in her mind or something and animals are not very fond of her and so when she gets on the horse the horse like is more calm than she expected but then the nightmare is like nope and then he makes his present known and the horse literally like gets so scared that she gets jolted off and like she falls off the horse onto her ass and that's what I mean by like he likes to stir the pot I really thought with that horse scene that we were gonna get a one horse moment with our MMC but nope to my disappointment this is like very very slow burn like, like i wouldn't even call this a romanticy because there's not a lot of romance happening i'm like 200 or so pages in and it's just like specs but things are going down they're in the middle of a very dire situation so i'm gonna get back to this and i'll probably update you guys when i finish the book or if something else happens I took out my like old camera for this, but I just had to update you guys. We're a little bit past the 11 hour mark and I'm at around like page 300 of the book. And I feel like everything I say update wise, take that with a grain of salt because whenever I go like there's no romance, there's no concrete direction as to like a mission or where the plot is going, I stand corrected. Literally 20 pages after I get that update, boom plot. And then not only is there plot, but there's also romance. And also I'm just gonna put a chapter update here for those who want context, but like what the heck happened at chapter 22? I feel like because I've been reading so much all day, my brain is just a little bit fried where I'm not trying to predict any sort of plot twist, but like that got me. I didn't see that coming. Now I just want to see the direction as to where this is going to end and where Twisted Crowns is going to pick up. I'm so happy that I have the second book, that the second book is out, that there's no waiting on my part. I didn't tab the other books, but I'm definitely tabbing this one a lot. And like you see the singular red tab, that is the romance that I was talking about. I've got 100 pages or so left in this book and I'll probably finish it at like the 12 hour mark or more or less around there. And then I'm jumping right into Twisted Crowns. I cannot wait. I just finished One Dark Window and it's a little bit past the 12 hour mark. Insane. This book is so good. This book is unlike anything I've ever read. Magic system in this book, the plot twist, the gothic atmosphere, and even the writing is just so unique. I do appreciate that it wasn't the last 30 pages where like a shit ton of stuff was crammed into the end just for like plot's sake to hype up the second book. I really feel like once the plot started picking up, the entire book just entranced me and I could not stop flipping the pages. I was just enthralled by the book and the writing and the world and like the mission that they were on I was so invested I love the direction that the book is going in I'm gonna give this book a 4.5 stars and it might seem like I'm just a really high rater but genuinely the books I've been reading in this video have been top tier these are some really good picks on my end and I'm eating them up you could just tell by all the tabs how obsessed I was like I said in the other clips I'm so glad that I have the second book that I can just jump right into it and the fact that it's a duology that everything's gonna get cleaned up real nicely at the end of this book I hope I'm literally gonna turn my phone on not disturb because I don't want anything to get in between me and this book right now. I need to know what happens next. I'll keep you guys updated. I 
I'm not even a chapter into Two Toast Crowns yet, but I am loving that there's a multi POV aspect to this because One Dark Window was all just Elspeth's POV. The additional POVs aren't necessarily first person, so it's not a very stark contrast from the writing in One Dark Window. I feel like with where the story is going, it's really necessary to have those extra POVs. All the characters right now, I think, are kind of separated and doing their own things. So it's interesting to see where this book is going, who's gonna unravel what, and just what's in store. I also didn't say this in my other clips, but I love all the names in this book, like Elspeth, Raven, Iona, Elle. Everyone's names are so creative. Anyways, I'm just excited to see what direction this book is gonna go in. I started trying to predict the ending of this book and I don't really like the direction that my head is going. A constant theme in both of the books is that magic always comes at a price. They're trying to unite all of the 12 tarot cards because they want to get rid of the mist and free people of the infection. And I'm just gonna say it, someone's gonna die because you're gonna need some sort of sacrifice, right? That's just where my head's going and I don't want anyone to die because I'm so attached to them. And if it is the one that I love the most, I'm done. I'm done. I don't think I can take any more loss. So if anyone dies in this book, I don't think I'm coming back from that. I genuinely feel like this entire video has been filmed from this chair, but it is the next day now and I did finish Two Twisted Crowns. I think I officially finished this book around that 17 hour and 20 minute mark. This book was the perfect ending to the duet. There's no better way to describe this duet than the fact that it's Grimm's fairy tales meets Infinity Wars like Avengers because it's got all the eerie gothic mystical vibes of like a Grimm fairy tale, but the like journey that the characters go on and like the hunt where they have to find these 12 tarot cards, that really reminds me of the Infinity Wars where they're collecting the stones. The tension in these books were so high. I was constantly at the edge of my seat, especially in this one. I feel like I was clutching my pearls the entire time I was reading this book because I was like, oh my god, no, please don't let this person die. I'm not like one for paranormal, so this isn't like super scary. The story is super enchanting, and if you just want like a quick two book series read where there's a bunch of romance, a bunch of ancient magic, a bunch of riddles, and everything of that galore, then definitely pick up these two books. Now that we're at the 17 hour mark, and there's seven hours left in this challenge. I feel like there's so many books that I can't possibly pick up. I've technically been in three different fantasy worlds. Like, I feel like I'm just teleporting. Not that reading's hard by any means, but like my brain gets tired after a while jumping from world to world. So I'm not looking to jump into any sort of high fantasy. I do want a book that has the whimsicalness of the Shepherd King's duet where there's like magic and it's like fairy tale vibes. The book I might pick up next is gonna be Once Upon a Broken Heart. And this is my gorgeous, gorgeous fairy loot edition. It is so beautiful. The spine of it is gorgeous. I've definitely heard about this book everywhere and it's been raved about so many times and I've seen everybody and their mothers fall in love with the story and the plot line but I've never had that urgency to pick the book up before only because I've heard it's in third person and I'm not the biggest lover of third person POVs except when I read The Crimson Moth that was in third person and it was YA writing so it was really easy to fly through and it didn't feel like third person. My best friend also picked this book up a while ago and she's absolutely loving it. She's on the second book and she says that book has been the best in the series so far. I can't I believe I've managed to avoid so many spoilers about this book, but I know nothing about this other than the fact that it's its own fairy tale that follows Evangeline who has pink hair and she's very very gorgeous and something about apples and Jack and that's all I know about this book and that's really all I do want to know. As crazy as I'm about to sound, I'm not going to read this physical edition that I own even though I spent my coins on it. This is my prized possession. I feel like this puts me on so many people's rob list. Instead I have it pulled up on my Kindle so I'm just going to read it off of this and I honestly read faster my Kindle anyways, so I don't think that's going to be an issue at all. I'm not gonna lie, jumping from the Shepherd Kings duet into this series is such a stark contrast. This is all hearts and rainbows and like pink so far, that sort of fairy tale. And then that one was just like black and like dark green and gray, misty sort of fairy tale. So I'm having a little bit of trouble adjusting to like the story and throwing myself into this plot so far. On the right side though, the book is so well written. It's so enchanting. It's got that whimsical element and it really reminds me of how Divine Rivals was written. The other good thing is that the timestamp on the bottom of my Kindle says that I have 4 hours and 33 minutes left in the book. So honestly, I might be able to get through the entirety of Once Upon a Broken Heart. That'll put us at like the 5 to 6 book range, which
which is insane because I didn't even think we were gonna come close to that number, but I'm gonna keep reading and I'll keep you guys updated. So far, I'm loving it. Guys, I have both good news and bad news, but since you guys can't really pick which one to go first, I'm gonna start with the bad news. The bad news is it's only been like 30 minutes of reading and my eyes are absolutely giving out on me. I don't know what's happening. I know the Kindle is supposed to be good for your eyes because it's anti-glare, but my eyes are like watering as I look at the pages. The good news is that I did find the audiobook for Once Upon a Broken Heart on my Hoopla and I'm gonna borrow it. The other good news is that I'm loving Evangeline and the Prince of Hearts like interactions so far. If it's that like faded love, forbidden romance sort of dynamic. I'm gonna eat up every bit of this book. The world itself reminds me a lot of Alice in Wonderland and then her family dynamic is giving like Cinderella with a stepmother and everything. I'm liking that there's like elements of familiarity from fairy tales that we originally know but it's also weaving something that's brand new, something that's unfamiliar. I'm gonna listen to it on audio. Clearly it's a new day and I didn't really do good on the updating part for the rest of the day because I basically ran my errands and then I knocked out as if I got shot by a horse tranquilizer. I did end up finishing the audiobook this morning. The timer is now at 22 minutes and 46 minutes. Stephanie Garber definitely delivered on the fairy tale front. It was so unique and creative. Definitely felt like a mosaic of all my favorite classic fairy tales. It was very YA writing, but I was a big fan of that because it was so easy to fly through and I didn't have to like use too much brain power to try to understand the world. The storyline follows Evangeline Fox who makes a deal with the Prince of Hearts for love and it's about their adventure and all the things that goes with the deal. And the story just takes so many twists and turns. Like you really don't know what to expect. Genuinely, the entire time I was reading the book, I kept going between feeling, is Evangeline just really naive and innocent, or am I absolutely getting played by Stephanie Garber and I'm playing into her hand? Because I always feel like I know exactly what's going to happen, but I have a feeling in her future books, it's absolutely going to take the most wicked twist. Also, with that cliffhanger ending, I'm so excited to pick up The Ballad of Never After. And then I'll give you guys my final updates at the end of this. I'm officially done with the 24 hours. The Ballad of Never After has me in a freaking choke cold right now. I'm like gonna make this the quickest update ever because I wanna go back into the book and I'm probably gonna finish it in the next couple of hours. Everyone who has ever said that The Ballad of Never After is their favorite in the series, I'm afraid that they're right. I finished on chapter 16 in that hour and the half that we had and I'm I'm appalled. I'm appalled. So much has happened in that 30%. The Ballad of Never After starts off with a little bit of a recap of book one and it picks up immediately after the cliffhanger. So you're not waiting in suspense trying to figure out what happens next. I literally kid you not, two pages after the cliffhanger continuation is like the craziest plot twist ever. And then it just does not stop after that. The book does not slow down in pacing. It was one thing after the other. There's like a scene in the book where she's like, I just need a minute. I just, I can't take anything else. Like just, I need a minute. And I'm like, girl, I would have needed it a minute two scenes ago. I honestly can't even like fault her for being naive or how I thought she was originally because if I was in her place I would not be able to do half the stuff she does or be able to handle half of the things that she's handling. I will say in book one there really isn't a lot of romance but in this one there's a little bit more lines that were being fed where I'm going like oh I'm just really excited to see where this book is gonna go and what direction Stephanie Garber is gonna take this and who ends up together because honestly I'm still not really sure who ends up with who. I'm done talking because I gotta go finish The Ballad Never After. Comment down below if you guys want me to do a 24 hour reading vlog like straight. I don't know if I can, but I think if I definitely did attempt that, I would not be reading as much as I've read now because I think when you're doing it straight, your eyes get more tired, you read at a slower pace, but I think pausing it and giving myself a break whenever I read definitely helps like refresh my eyes and allows me to like read faster at the same rate. In a 24 hour time span, I'm so shocked that I can read a good amount. So I'm pretty proud of myself regardless. Thank you guys so much for watching subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye.